Balancing video games is difficult. Very rarely does a game studio get everything right on their first try, no matter how much time or effort went into the game. But thankfully, we live in the age of the internet, where developers can look at their own questionable decisions and effectively retcon them out of existence through patches and updates. And when it comes to multiplayer shooters, this is a very beneficial tool for game devs to use in the time where they genuinely messed up balancing and want to fix it. But like many things in life, this process is very rarely clean. Sometimes weapons get over-nerfed, sometimes weapons get under-nerfed, sometimes weapons get multiple nerfs, even though the original laser projectile wasn't even good for dealing damage in the first place and Valve nerfed the Righteous Bison for no reason because... <clears throat> anyway, today's topic is about weapon nerfs, specifically the weapons that have had the harshest nerfs throughout the game's history. And just for fun, I'll throw in my own two cents about whether each one should have been nerfed because people overwhelmingly love when I give my opinion on game balance. Well, let's start with the minor ones because TF2 has quite the history of nerfing weapons. The soda popper as a gun has been pretty much untouched since it was added to the game. However, the secondary hype function of the soda popper has seen quite a few different iterations of varying power levels. The original hype meter instantly gave you many crits the second it was full, and instead of dealing damage to fill it like you do now, now, it passively filled whenever you were running around with your primary out. What this effectively meant is that by switching to your melee right before your primary meter was full, and then by switching back to the soda popper whenever you got near somebody, you had a free Criticola with a no damage vulnerability that activated instantly, which is just as broken as it sounds. This version lasted until Christmas of 2013, where the hype meter was completely changed to give you five midair jumps instead of many crits, and then was changed again during Meet Your Match, where hype was built by dealing damage instead of running around. So is this a necessary nerf? I mean, you could instantly give yourself free mini crits on what's already one of the best primaries in the game, so yeah, I think the nerfs were probably a good idea. Honestly, I'm only considering this to be a minor nerf though, since 5 extra jumps is still really good and you can now store the charge for as long as you want, making this more of a side grade to the original instead of a direct nerf. Overall, probably one of the better weapon fixes Valve has ever done. The Righteous Bison, dear lord, this is a weapon that was just screwed from the very beginning. This is a weapon that I could go on a rant about for hours at a oh, time. Oh, you want to rant about the bison? Who are you? I'll what's, give you a rant on? about how'd you, the bison. How'd you get in my video? I'll what's going on? I'll rant your freaking head off. This weapon is a meme. A joke, a goofy prank. But for some reason, whenever a TF2 dev is in a bad mood, they grab a shovel and beat the lifeless corpse of the bison to take the edge off. Remember Meet Your Match? Of course you do. How can you forget? In that single update alone, they made it the slowest projectile in the game, reduced its damage, nerfed the player penetration, which is basically its only upside, and got rid of the damage piercing. And in Jungle Inferno, they pranked us all by saying they reverted the changes, but actually made it so it deals even less damage than before. Seriously, there's a chance you deal 20 freaking damage at point blank range. 20 damage! By the way, um, I made a video about the bison. If you want to see me rant more, please watch it. I need to buy my third official the what yacht. Well, I don't know how you got into my video, but that's a very helpful and informative rant. Thank you, The What Show. Also, also, you go watch his video on the bison, it's really good. Anyway, the base jumper was another victim of the questionable Valve nerf hammer. Most people know about the redeploy nerf, where in Jungle Inferno, they removed the ability to reopen the parachute in midair once you'd already closed it. But on top of that, it also had its air control halved, as well as its really weird fire updraft mechanic removed, which is something I'm sure not many people are crying about, but it's still kind of sad to see it gone. As for whether it should have been nerfed, I'm honestly on the side of no for this one. The main complaint that people had with the base jumper, and by people I mean competitive players, was that it was difficult to land air shots on base jumping players since you could be a lot more unpredictable with your aerial movement. But like, that was the one useful function of this weapon. Did we really need to completely nix it because line green soldiers couldn't hit their air shots in pubs? So yeah, the base jumper overall should have remained untouched. The degreaser. Okay, rant time. The degreaser is a weapon that a lot of people don't understand the extent of the nerfs it went through. They look at the switch speed before and after the nerfs, they look at the damage comparisons, and then they think to themselves, well that's basically nothing. But let me tell you that it is in fact something, and it's something that completely neutered a lot of Pyro's more skill-based combos. In the Tough Break update during 2015, the Degreaser was hit hard. Now sure, they removed the 10% damage penalty on the primary fire, but they also increased the air blast cost and heavily lowered the afterburn damage, meaning that your total damage was still at a loss. But most importantly, they changed the switch speed bonus to only be deploy and holster instead of universal. What this effectively meant is that in addition to severely weakening Pyro's three-hit combo with flare guns and extinguishers, in addition to making flare punches is much more difficult to perform on moving pyros due to the slower holster speed, in addition to ruining a lot of other combos that mostly use secondaries and melees, it also ruined the one thing the degreaser was good at, consistency. Because of how TF2 handles deploy and holster speed modifiers, the degreaser's holster speed sometimes just doesn't work. In order for you to actually get the holster speed bonus, which is like the main reason to use the weapon, you have to completely have it deployed for a half second. While this doesn't sound like much, you used to be able to perform a puff and sting, or puffing someone with fire and stinging them with a flare gun, and about point 
0.8 seconds, meaning that one of Pyro's main combos, and also one of the main skill-based things the class can do, had its effective time nerfed by a little over 50% if you're switching from the Power Jack, which you very often are. I'm going to make an entire video ranting about the Tough Break Pyro changes, but for now, know that the degrees or nerfs, as small as they may seem at first, butcher the consistency of a lot of skill-reliant combos, and I've been salty about it for six and a half years. Anyway, moving on to Demo Man now, the Lock and Load used to be one of the most BS weapons in the entirety of TF2. Because its 20% damage to building stat used to be a 20% damage to everything stat, you could effectively one-shot light classes from any range using this thing, which was dummy powerful. But hold on a minute, grenades do 100 damage, so wouldn't a 20% damage bonus only boost them to 120, which isn't enough to instantly kill light classes? Why yes, attentive viewer, what an excellent observation you just made that I didn't spoon feed you. The only reason the old lock and load was overpowered was because of a mechanic called random damage spread, which gave a 15% variance in the damage of each hit. If the lock and load rolled high enough, which had about a 40% chance of happening, then light classes just got removed from the face of the earth if they got hit. I'll include a video by Lister in the description if you want to learn more about this mechanic, because it's a super interesting topic that I've not seen a lot of people talk about. But here's the thing that a lot of people tend to forget. The lock and load was actually uniquely changed in 2014 Christmas update, so this wasn't an issue anymore. So the removal of the damage bonus, which didn't happen until gunmetal six months later, was completely pointless considering the state of the weapon at the time. So no, I don't think the lock and load should have gotten nerfed, especially considering the nerfs it did end up getting. The Wrangler barely made this list, having received quite a few nerfs over the years. This actually might surprise some people, since the Wrangler is still insanely good as it is, but believe it or not, it used to be a whole lot better, having never really received a buff in its entire existence. In 2013, it had its long-range accuracy reduced, in 2014 it had damage fall-off added to its shots, and in gunmetal it was changed so repairing a Wrangled Sentry was much less effective. Now thank god for these nerfs, because the original Wrangler was hell on wheels to fight against, not that that's really changed over the years, but I do think the fact that the Wrangler has only received nerfs since 2011 does at least warrant a mention on the most nerf weapons list. And finally, the Enforcer is worth putting on here, having a single stat that made it great mostly stripped from it. Why Valve decided that a flat 20% damage bonus on a revolver was too powerful as anyone's guess, but having a singular damage boosted shot on a 3 second cooldown is, uh, not very good to say the least. If nothing else, the Enforcer at least got the damage resistance piercing stat, meaning that it's now a solid way to deal with the Wranglers and Fists of Steel, but the nerfs definitely made the Enforcer go from one of the better choices for the slot into relative obscurity. So those are what I'm considering to be the minor nerfs, mostly because the overall effectiveness of the weapons they're on didn't drop too much after them. The Degreaser is still one of Pyro's best primaries, and the Bison wasn't exactly game-breaking before the nerfs, but these can't quite compete for the title of most nerf weapon because there are a few others that got absolutely massacred. These are in no particular order, by the way, I'm just listing them as I find them. The Babyface's Blaster is a tale as old as time. In the ancient era of 2015 BC, the Babyface's Blaster didn't... It, well, it didn't exist, it's not that old. But in 2015 AD, specifically in the Gunmetal update, Valve added two major downsides to the weapon that absolutely killed its effectiveness. Before the Gunmetal update, not only did you not lose any boost every time you took damage, but the penalty for double jumping was only a meager 25% boost loss instead of the insane 75% it is now. I remember this weapon before it got nerfed, and I also remember it being one of the best scout primaries to use in pubs up there with the stock and the soda popper, but after gunmetal a lot of people dropped this thing and for good reason. Now were the nerfs necessary? Kinda. A good scout using the BFB was frustratingly difficult to kill due to how fast he was, even if the whole scout outruns his hitbox thing was a complete myth, but the nerfs that did get were complete overkill, and a more moderate fix to the weapon would have been ideal. Similarly, the Sandman went from being easily one of the best scout melees to easily one of the worst. I'm sure quite a few of you know that it used to bonk targets at hit instead of just slowing them, causing them to go into the scared animation that happens when you touch a ghost or lose a round, but a lot of people forget that the Sandman used to be completely and utterly broken. Upon being added to the game, the ball would fully stop you and lock you in place regardless of the distance you were to the scout. Oh, and this also applied to Uber players, just in case it wasn't dumb enough already. This version was nerfed into what most people remember in 2010, along as having its downside change from being no double jumping to the minus 15 max health we're familiar with. But then in Jungle Inferno, seven years later, the Sandman's long-running streak of actual usability would come to an abrupt halt. Baseball hits now slightly slow targets instead of completely stunning them, which is an effect so pointless that sacrificing 15 max health for it is a complete scam. That's also not to mention that the slowdown effect is completely negatable in this game by holding both W and Strafe at the same time. This is easily one of the hardest falls from grace any TF2 weapon has ever experienced, and in my personal opinion, the nerfs they gave it were absolutely overkill, even if the old version was pretty annoying to play against. The Reserve Shooter, on the other hand, is a weapon that absolutely deserved at least most of the nerfs it got. The current Reserve Shooter is a tool that can be used to punish explosive jumping, which isn't the most useful thing in the world, but it has its uses, I guess. The old Reserve Shooter, though, punished you for any kind of jumping, dealing many crits to anyone who was airborne regardless of how they got there. Press jump, 
Nope, mini crits got air blasted, mini crits fell off of a one inch high ledge, mini crits straight to the soul. This was easily one of the most annoying weapons to fight against back in the day because it punished you for using the most basic game mechanic, not only in TF2, but in any first person shooter ever. Imagine if there was a weapon in TF2 that got mini crits on people because they were moving forward. That's how utterly insane the old design of this weapon was. Now, thankfully, Tough Braid changed how the mini crits work, so you only got them if your target was forced into the air rather than by jumping through their own volition. But in Jungle Inferno, it was further updated to only mini crit against explosive jumping and nothing else. Now, should they have nerfed the reserve shooter's combo with air blast? I don't think they should have actually, since you were giving up a fair amount of mid-range damage with the lower clip size it had. But the nerf from the original airborne mini crit design was completely massive, and I remember the collective celebration in the community when it finally got what was coming to it. The equalizer technically got nerfed, since back in 2012 it was split into both the current equalizer and the escape plan. This nerf did make sense, since the old equalizer really did feel like it was two different weapons combined into one with all the stuff they loaded into it. But considering how the speed boost was by far the more useful of the two concepts, the equalizer losing it did really hurt. But that's not the only reason I'm considering this weapon to be one of the most nerfed in the game. That comes from the fact that the old equalizer's damage was much higher than it is now. Instead of the pitiful 107 max damage that it can currently deal, the old version did up to 162, which when combined with the speed boost it gave you, created an extremely effective melee-only playstyle that could one-shot a lot of classes. But when you also combine this with the random damage spread mechanic I mentioned earlier, it was actually possible to roll high enough to one-shot pyros and demos too, making this thing one of the best weapons in the game at the time. Now, as far as whether the damage nerfs were deserved, my opinion's a bit complicated. I think that every nerf on its own was justified, seeing as how good the equalizer continued to be before it was split into two weapons, but I do wish they reverted several of the damage nerfs when the equalizer was split, because today it feels very underwhelming compared to its sister pickaxe. The extinguisher is another melee weapon that suffered the wrath of Valve, having multiple iterations that kept making the weapon worse over time. The first version of the extinguisher was pretty cut and dry. You hit a burning enemy, you get a crit. You hit a non-burning enemy, you sneeze on the back of their neck. But then in 2014, Valve decided that the class who specialized in close-range combat was too effective at close-range combat, so they made the extinguisher only do crits on backstabs and mini crits from the front. So okay, that made the extinguisher into primarily an ambush weapon, but I guess people complain that they died when they were ambushed, which like, that'll happen. So Valve completely lost their minds and decided to nerf the extinguisher into the ground so hard that it tunneled through the center of the earth and resurfaced in the middle of India. The tough break extinguisher was one of the worst balancing decisions that Valve ever made to a weapon, and that's really saying something considering what else that update changed. It did do crits from any direction again, which I guess was a nice gesture that was completely killed by the 33% damage penalty, 20% slower firing speed, and the 75% deploy speed penalty, which deleted the single remaining use case this weapon had. I kid you not when I say that the changes to the degreaser and the extinguisher brought on by the tough break update made me stop playing Pyro until Jungle Inferno came out, since the only thing he was good at by then was WM1. But again, I intend to make an entire video on that later, so I'll spare you the insane rambling for now. Thankfully, there was a final change to the extinguisher during the Blue Moon update that converted it into what it is now, but while dealing more damage based on afterburn is a creative mechanic, it's a far cry from the combo weapon it used to be. Under the Tide Turner, there have been several critical nerfs to this thing since it was added, or I guess I should say many critical nerfs, because one of the harshest stat changes it got was the removal of the guaranteed charge crit. Now, yes, the guaranteed charge crit combined with the insane charge control was a bit hard to combat, especially since Demo refilled his entire charge meter every time he killed someone like that, but I would still say that the charge reduction from taking damage, the reduced fire and explosive resistances, the decreased charge refilled on kill, and the general changes to how Demo Knight shields calculate crits and damage were definitely more than this thing deserved. Still, though, it is one of the better Demo Man shields for Hybrid Knight as it is, so I guess I can't complain about it too much. What I can and will complain about, though, were the nerfs to the Caber, which converted this thing from being a really fun meme weapon to a depression generator. For those unaware, the Kaber used to be able to one-shot medics as well as having a chance to kill pyros and demos in one hit depending on explosion ramp up. However, as people didn't take kindly to things that aren't sniper being able to instant kill their pocket medic, the explosion damage was reduced to pitiful levels, barely doing more than your grenades or stickies. But then they nerfed it again during tough break for some reason, giving it a stupidly long deploy speed penalty and lowering the firing speed, which like, dude, this thing is barely usable anyway, you didn't need to kick it while it was down. So now the Kaber we're left with is a shell of its former self, being resigned to a meme status is not even a funny one at that. Honestly, the more I talk about the tough break update, the more I hate it. I don't know why Meet Your Match is the update that everyone clowns on when this exists. On to the Ambassador, you're never going to guess which update this thing got nerfed in.
It's, it's the Jungle Inferno update. You thought I was going to rant about the tough break more, didn't you? Now, to be fair, the only nerf the Ambassador actually got was a headshot damage fall-off penalty, where the farther away you are from your target, the less damage your headshots deal. Actually, no, that's not true. It did get a bullet penetration stat removed back in 2009, but only old people remember that. As it turns out, stripping away the effective range on a weapon that specializes in effective range is bad. Sure, you can still use it to two-tap a lot of people, but that's not nearly as useful when you consider how close to people you have to be for that to happen. The old Ambassador's design rewarded accuracy, which did become more difficult from longer ranges, but what does the new design do over something like the Diamondback? Not that much, I'll tell you that. Spy is already a weak class that's supposed to specialize in picking people off, so I'll always be amazed by the decision to nerf the only revolver that adequately provided you with a skill-based alternative way to do so. And I'll cap out our list of pain with the Dead Ringer, which, uh... <laughs> really used to be something. The original Dead Ringer had the following changes from today's version. The cloak meter didn't immediately drain when decloaking. Cloak could be refilled from ammo boxes, but not only that, even small ammo boxes completely refilled the entire meter. You had an 80% damage reduction for the entire duration of your cloak, including for the initial hit. And finally, bumping enemies and taking damage would never cause you to shimmer, meaning that you were completely undetectable for the entire cloak duration. The only positive change the Dead Ringer got out of all of this was a 3 second speed boost, but that's peanuts compared to how insane tanky this thing used to make you. I definitely understand why this thing got nerfed, as back in the day you used to be able to decloak next to ammo packs and effectively have a permanent dead ringer, but I can't help but wish for the good old days to come back. And <laughs> nah, just kidding, this thing was overpowered as hell. I'm happy with the state that it's in now. So anyway, that's today's rant about all the weapons that got severely nerfed over the lifetime of the game. I'll also give honorable mentions to the Bonk Atomic Punch, Rescue Ranger, Atomizer, Fists of Steel, Flying Guillotine, Gloves of Running Urgently, Palms and 6000, and Sticky Bomb Launcher, which barely didn't make the list for one reason or another. My factors for which weapons I decided to talk about are admittedly very arbitrary, so if you think any of these are worse than the weapons I put on the list, let me know in the comments. It's interesting to go back through all the most nerfed weapons in the game and see if they really deserved it, doubly so when half of them actually didn't. But hey, it's not like this game's ever getting any more balance changes, so there's no use crying over spilled milk. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like. If you hated this video, that's too bad because YouTube nerfed the dislike button, and most importantly, have a good one.